I want you to take your Bibles tonight and turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Thank you, Rhoda, and thank you, Doris. The greatest reality in the Word of God is the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the other great reality is his resurrection. You know, when the shepherds, when the shepherds first went to see this Christ child when he was born in Bethlehem and laid in a manger, they came back and they reported some of the things that had occurred, and the scripture says the people simply wondered at what these shepherds reported. They wondered at it. The same thing is true about the return of Christ the second time. When he came the first time, the people wondered about it, and they went on talking with their current events. It didn't change their lives. They just wondered. And they went on with their current events, talking about their taxes, their commerce, and their politics with his first coming. Watch his name. Uh, uh, Serenius had just instituted a tax, remember? And so when these people reported about the shepherds, reported about the Christ child being born, his first coming, the people simply wondered. They kept talking about their taxes, kept talking about their current events, talking about their commerce, about their politics. And the same thing is true today regarding the return of Christ, his second coming, which will include the resurrection. In 1 Corinthians 15 and in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 to 18, and chapter 5, 1 to 11, and in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 to 3. You have some of the greatest truths and realities regarding this that I want to share and teach with you tonight. The hope of Christ's return is today almost obliterated by theological garbage and by modern church teaching. The thing that all of us have lived under and have been taught is that we are going to build the kingdom. And if we are going to build the kingdom, if we're going to build the kingdom, then we do not need the resurrection or Christ's return. I believe failure of the hope of Christ's return in the church that has caused so much misunderstanding about his death, his resurrection, and everything Christ accomplished for us. And there are very, very few people, deeply spiritual people, that you can speak today to today who have a great hope for Christ's return. Most people hope he doesn't come yet. Most people hope that he'll wait another 500 years or 200 years, at least wait long enough, Lord, until I die. Don't come now. I mean, this is the attitude that has permeated the hearts and lives of people. And when you talk to them about the hope of Christ's return, instead of building believing in them, it builds fear in them. The reason it builds fear in them is because of the wrong teaching that they've had and because there are very few people who know anything about the resurrection and they have no hope for Christ's return because they do not know what it will bring. The other phase that has been most misunderstood and most mistaught has been the remission of sins and the forgiveness of sins. People do not understand their standing in their state with Christ and in God and failing to understand their standing and their state with God, they naturally could do nothing but to teach that we are going to build the kingdom. (laughs) And people, again, let me say, if you and I are going to build the kingdom, then there is no sense in the king's return. There is nothing to our gospel. Then we are false prophets 
we are believing wrongly and the power of God that we're supposed to manifest is not regnant within us and we have nothing to give to our day and to our age. Do you people remember from Matthew? I believe it's the 15th chapter where the subject of the resurrection is the discussion. And Jesus says pointedly to the people, you do err, not knowing what the scriptures nor the power of God. 1 Corinthians 15 is a great chapter on the resurrection and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And again, I would like to say that we err today regarding the resurrection and the return of Christ because of our lack of knowledge of the Word of God. We err not knowing the Scriptures, and secondly, we, we err not knowing the power of God. In John, remember this chapter, you'll know it very well, Jesus said, let not your heart be what? Troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. I go to prepare a what? Place for you. Now listen. He says, and if I go, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, ye may what? Right. That's what it says. That's what it means. But we have been taught just the opposite. You know what we have really been saying in our action and in our lives in so-called Christendom? We have said, Lord, you don't need to come for me. I'm going to die and come to you. That's what we've been teaching. People, that's exactly what we've been believing. We have been teaching and believing that like that scripture says in John, if I go, I will come again. I will come again and I will receive you. That where I am, ye shall be also. We have said, Lord, that can't be because I want to die and I'm coming to you. Not that you're coming for me, I'm coming for, to you. Now, people, that, they can't both be right. That's why I said to you at the beginning tonight, that the hope of Christ's return is almost obliterated in our modern day and age. This error regarding the return of Christ, the resurrection, all of these matters that I want to deal with tonight crept into the church very, very early. You'll find that they're already in the church in the record recorded in 1 Corinthians 15. In verse 12, now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the one? There were people living at that time who immediately responded to the ministry of the apostle Paul and the revelation God had given him by teaching that there is no resurrection. This thing was not just in Paul's time, but it was in Jesus. Remember the Sadducees believed that there is no what? Resurrection. The same type of truth is given in Timothy. In 2 Timothy, chapter 2, verse 17. And their word will eat as does the canker of whom is Hymenaeus, and by latest, who concerning the truth have heard, saying that the resurrection is past, what? Already, and overthrow the faith or the believing of some. Not only did they say there is no what? Resurrection, but another group said the resurrection is past already. That's why I said our knowledge regarding the hope of Christ's return, the resurrection, and so forth, is almost obliterated. They either teach there is no resurrection or they teach it's already over with. 